What's up, guys? I'm going to go ahead and apologize for the way I sound. Uh, mode for the first time yesterday, and allergies are kicking my butt. So we uh, got the GSO RC6 set up tonight. Uh, this is going to be an unguided uh, setup tonight, uh, and we are at 94% moon. So I'm going to go probably hit a couple random targets, um, probably just do 30-second exposures. Uh, we have the C19 Y4 Atlas Comet. Um, probably going to try and get maybe two or three hours on that tonight before uh, it gets too low for me. Um, and after that, we might move to uh, a gobular cluster. I'm not sure which one yet. There's like three or four. Uh, M13 is one of them. M3. Um, I think M92 is the other. So we'll see. We'll go after one of them. Probably just switch around uh, maybe 11 o'clock, midnight. We'll run a couple hours on that one too. Um, see what happens. Uh, the scope, uh, we always said we're running the GSO um, RC6. And that has a native focal length of 1,370 millimeters at f9. Um, I do have the 0.67 reducer in it, so we're roughly uh, 1,090 millimeters uh, at f6. I was messing with the collimation on the scope the other night, and I think I got it pretty uh, pretty well dialed in. But we'll see. Um, hopefully, everything turns out pretty decent. Uh, clouds are supposed to stay away till about four o'clock. Uh, moon's gonna be out all night, so that'll just be uh, be a part of the fun, I guess. So we got about another hour, and uh, sun should come down, and then we'll get our uh, polar alignment done, and then she'll be able to start imaging. Okay, well, a couple more things while we're waiting for it to get dark. Uh, tonight we are going to use the ASI 294 MC Pro colored camera. Uh, it's a cool colored camera, so um, I usually run my camera at negative uh, 10 degrees um, keeps it easy during summer and winter you know any time of year I can get it to that temp we will also be using the Bader moon and sky glow filter uh, so far it's worked out really good for me um, I haven't noticed any issues or anything uh, I don't I've never compared it to anything else uh, so I don't know like versus like the uh, Optolong L Pro or anything like that I, I would like to give that filter a shot at some point um, but eh, as of now this one seems to work pretty good uh, I am also running my entire setup off of the um, ASI Air tonight. Uh, that's mainly what I run everything off of. I've never tried anything else. Um, I am thinking about downloading uh, Sequence Generator Pro and giving that a shot. Um, at some point, we'll see. Uh, the ASI Air is just so easy to use off your phone or your tablet. So, so far I've really been happy with that. Um, I also have a Pegasus Power Box. Uh, the pocket power box that I use, and that's why I power up my cooler and um, my dew heaters and stuff like that when I need them. So, yeah, that's kind of the, the rundown of the setup. You can see temporarily I have everything just kind of mounted to the finder scope slot. The ASI Air and the Pegasus power box. A little bit of some cable management needs to be done here, but not too shabby for now. Here in a minute, when we run our polar align feature, when we adjust that, we use there's a knob here on the back, which moves you up and down. That's probably really hard to see. There's a knob here and a knob over here that help you move them out left and right. And basically what you're trying to do is the scope needs to be pointed towards Polaris. It takes a picture, rotates 60 degrees, and then takes another picture, and that lets it know roughly where the mount is and has you adjust off of that. So then your mount is, at that point, perfectly polar aligned, and that'll give you your best tracking and guiding results throughout the night. Also helps out with your go-to, so when you actually select uh, an object, whether it be through your phone or um, through Sky Safari or, you know, through your mount, um, you know, you should have a better chance of being spot on on that target. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it says, uh, 
I just did my first plate solve for polar alignment. It says it took two seconds. Now it says tap next to rotate 60 degrees on the RA axis. So basically, we will touch that and it should rotate. Now it's solving and going again. It says it's ready to go. So you tap, let's go. In order to go through and tell you roughly how far off you are. So let's go ahead and make some adjustments and we'll go from there. Okay, so we've got everything polar aligned. Uh, next thing I like to do is I'm gonna slew to a little bit of a brighter star. Uh, I want to check my focus, and then on this scope, I have to check the collimation of it and make sure everything is good to go. And as long as we are good there, then we should be able to go to our first target. Uh, like I said, hopefully the first target is going to be C2019-Y4, uh, also known as Atlas. That's the comet. Uh, I have only shot a comet once. Uh, it was last year, and it was just like really quick. Um, didn't really have much of a tail. It was a dim, you know, pretty pretty dim comet. But uh, this one's proven to be pretty good, and it's supposed to be fairly bright come uh, the end of April into May. And you might even be able to see it with the naked eye. So let's just all keep our fingers crossed, and hopefully uh, that's something we can see. So let's get at it. So I'm gonna choose my star. Telescope will slew over to it. We are using Capella. And there you go. There she is. She's centered. We'll just double check and make sure we have the best focus that we can and we'll go from there. So while we're waiting, uh, it's still got to get a little bit more dark, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and shoot some flat frames. Uh, I just use a uh, A4 tracing pad that I got off of Amazon. It's really cheap. It was like 20 bucks. Um, and I just stretch a white t-shirt over it because it doesn't get dim enough. Uh, you can overexpose the flat really quick, uh, I guess you could say. Um, it, it is a little too bright. I don't know if there is any way to dim that down if anybody does know uh, how that works or if you can put a dimmer in line with the plug or something, let me know. Um, I wanted to buy a flat box, but I'm too cheap because they're like 250 or $300, so... We'll uh, mess with this one for a while and see what we can do. Uh, it seems to work out pretty good for the most part. I'm sure the actual flat box would be really nice, but you know, as of now, this works. So we're gonna take some flat frames and then we should be good to start uh, imaging on the Comet.